Hey, good morning everybody. Chuck here, KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures. Hey, welcome back to the channel, or if you're new here, think about subscribing. You can always uh, unsubscribe if you don't find things you like here, but uh, I think you'll, if you're into ham radio, I have a lot of different videos on different types of ham radio builds, POTUS, like Sparks on the Air, Sodas, Summits on the Air, and various other things, all kinds of builds. All right, today I want to talk about an antenna that I built a while back. It's called a halo antenna. Sometimes it's called a squalo or squalo. I'm not exactly sure, and that usually that means that they're square instead of round. Just so you know, I'll give you the dimensions probably twice in this video. Uh, one, one time will be, I'll, I'll actually do an overhead and I'll measure everything out for you. And then another one, I may put the dimensions down in the uh, description. That's down below. Now let me repeat that because some people don't always catch this and maybe they skip through this part. It'll be in the description and I also will do something in the video with a tape measure or whatever from my overhead. So here's the antenna I built and I don't know how, how well you're going to be able to see it here. I'll try to, uh, I'll, I'll try to uh, get a closer look, look of it and I will get a closer look later at, at least. And this one is for two meter. And basically, it's a horizontally, it's a horizontal, it's not a vertical, it's a horizontal antenna. For two meter repeaters and stuff like that, probably not the best antenna for you. This is more for uh, like sideband or something like that. So let's kind of go through what a halo is. Okay, a halo basically is a, a half square uh, dipole. It's usually in a circle, but sometimes it's square, like I said earlier. And uh, they're, they are good, they're horizontally, so not vertically, but horizontal type antenna. And um, so anything that would work like your regular HF stuff, it'll be good for that, like sideband and stuff like that, CW. And also being horizontal, they're an om omnidirectional antenna. They're not a, they're not any, like a beam or anything like that. And the, the really cool thing about these antennas, you can, they're relatively small. A lot of people will use them for mobiles in the two meter, six meter sizes. And uh, because they're, they take the wind pretty well. Now they're not going to do good if you hit something with like a tree branch or something like that, because they're not um, springy like a vertical whip would be, but they, but they do hold up pretty good, and I know I've got a good buddy that uh, he's totally into six meter uh, sideband, and <laughs> he mounted one on his pickup. And the, the six meters, pretty good size. There, uh, someplace on the internet, there is a um, an article on how to make one out of an old lawn chair. You know, the old type with the straps that go across them. Uh, I had one. Somehow it disappeared from my house. Somebody needed it worse than I did. So who knows? Now a halo is different than a loop antenna like a magnetic loop. It's, uh, it's a totally different antenna. This one, the SWR, is pretty good through the whole two meter band, if I remember right. Mine has a gamma match. So right here, and, uh, and I don't know everything about these. I, they're, they're an intriguing type of antenna. Uh, my buddy suggested for listening for openings on six meter here in uh, California, which we don't get a ton of openings like he does, but being omnidirectional, you'll get like versus my beam, my beam may be pointed, you know, due east, but I may be picking up stuff off the sides, you know, it rejects from the sides and the back. So an omnidirectional, even though it doesn't have the gain of a, uh, of, a of like a five or six element Yagi, it does hear in all directions. So that does help. There's the modern uh, halo and the, uh, and the original type halos. The one I have is basically original. It's got one loop around. And the modern ones have like two radiating elements around a lot of times now. Um, and I'll, I'll list some places where you guys can either make, well, a builds or also where you can buy them. M Squared has one, I know. They, they're a really reputable uh, antenna company out here in California. They're down near Fresno. And like any antenna, a Halo is a compromise antenna also. Like, just like any antenna there is out there, the, every one of them has some type of a compromise or an advantage over other antennas. Now, when fed with a gamma match, it's uh, usually a DC, it's, a, it's basically a DC antenna, so it, it will have reduced static buildup on the antenna itself, and that helps for noise. They also will pick up less ignition noise from your car also, 
So that makes them another reason they're fairly good for a mobile. And, and, but they're going to stick out compared to just a straight whip. So it's not going to be as unnoticeable as a whip. I mean, I've got a uh, two meter antenna on my truck. It's black and sometimes you can't even see it. But so it's not going to be like that. Maybe if they paint it black, it'll help a little bit too. Now you can stack halos uh, fairly easy since they're small antennas and, they're, and the size, the distance between them sometimes is not very much. And you, you about double the gain. It's, uh, I think you get more, more gain out of a halo than most antennas when you stack them. A well-constructed halo will have a 50 ohm match at your uh, antenna lead. So your, your radio is going to like that. Okay, some of the disadvantages is, is being horizontal. It won't have any um, vertical type of uh, radiation really. And that's not going to be good for your FM repeaters and stuff like that. Now I'm not now I'm not saying it won't work, but you're you're, you're if you're going to do FM and do repeaters, you're better off with a vertical because most of that's vertical anyhow, right? This is a pretty easy project. Um, I'm gonna I'll do some overhead or some stuff off the computer and show you uh, different builds that guys have, uh, different guys have built on, and they put them they put them on the internet, and. Like some of them use copper. If you don't want to spend the money for copper, there's really no reason why you can't buy conduit, like EMT con lightweight conduit. Um, probably not any heavier, but a lot less expensive. And then you can buy the corner connectors just like you can for copper. And, and they usually just bolt together. I'm actually gonna take my uh, two meter out one of these times and set it up on a mast just to listen for two meter sideband and uh, see what kind of, see actually how it does. I haven't actually, I've used it here at the house, but I sit, in, I sit in a hole here and I don't really get a whole lot of a two meter sideband here. Now on my, on my, um, up on my tower there, I've got a two meter um, seven element M squared antenna and that does pretty good. I bent mine with a little bender. I bought a little bender that bends certain sizes metals and uh, the hardest part's getting the bends in the right place. So I mean, it's not too difficult once, you, once you've done it a few times. All right, let me, uh, let me switch gears here. We're going to go in and I will get on the computer and I'm going to show you a few builds that other people have done that are pretty easy. And then there's also, if I can find it, there's a guy, I think he's in Southern California, uh, did a really nice copper build on one. And uh, I'll, I'll try to link that for you guys or, and show you his link. Okay, here's a uh, antenna project uh, by VK1AD, 14.2 uh, millihertz. And I'm just going to show you a couple quick ones here, different designs. These are actually made round. So it's a halo, not a squalo or squalo. And uh, I'll try to link his page down below. Um, all I did was put in halo antennas. And this guy does a bunch of stuff. He's got a pretty good site. I've been here before. So that's one That's one of the, one, the uh, antenna designs there. Now this guy here, um, Mike Fedler, N6TWW, this is a pretty nice looking setup. And he's, again, has made his round. And I, I would suppose he's using some type of, if you read down in here, it's a uh, bendable type, something like you use for hooking up your uh, ice maker. Uh, maybe quarter inch or half inch. I don't know if you, you guys can go in here. And I'll, I'll link this one also. Okay, this is Sal Electronics. Um, my buddy bought his six meter one here for his truck. If you look down, they they basically say it's a DC grounded for effective static dissipation. And it just goes down. It talks about the twice the band with the single element, uh, no means, no matching network. So you can go to the site and read all this stuff here. And it's 144 to 148. They are saying a gain of uh, 2.15 dBi. So a little different and it says power limits 1500 watts. And so they're they're not super cheap. This is the 2 meter version and $150 and you can do it with a S connector or a N connector. And this here's our typical uh, SWR curve and what that looks like. Let's go uh, we'll look at M squared next. Now the other manufacturer Okay, is uh, M squared. M squared makes high quality stuff. Um, there's a little bit different. And I don't think I would, if you look at this design, I don't think I would mount this one. Maybe for two meters, okay. But not definitely not for six meter. I don't think I'd do it on a mobile. But you probably could. Uh, if you look down here, he's got um, 
all kinds of different parts. It shows you how it's made and everything. Just a just another way and, and just another way to make it. And here's here's examples of stacking. It looks like they're stacking one here with maybe a 70 centimeter in the middle. And this and these are on uh, you get four mounts here for uh, magnets. And here's another magnet mount, just a single if you have just the one. So just a quick view. Just check these guys out. Uh, $117.99. And if you go on here, um, there's also, let me just hit this. And then it goes on here. It gives you all the parts. And sometimes it will give you dimensions. Yeah, there's dimensions there. And this is, this is a different style antenna here. They make really high quality stuff. Okay, that's just a few things. A few different makers and places to go. I told you I'd measure this out for you. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you this. This is the uh, the bar that I made some of the parts out of. And if you if you watched my uh, my video on my um, junk box uh, CW key, this is what I made it out of. So this is an inch and a half by half inch. So sorry I can't get all this in my my table's too close to my camera and I'm zoomed out as far as I can but I'll, I'll move it around so you can see so basically you have your gap here okay and the gap is inch and an eighth inch and an eighth on the gap and if you go down the sides here they should be pretty square about 11 inches there uh, let's measure it back here 11 inches so pretty easy I'm gonna measure all the way around it for you but let me just show you okay so you got 11 by 11 is this is this for 2 meter now here's the uh, the bracket I built and there's a piece of that that flat stock that I showed you this is just an, another piece of flat aluminum that I had it laying around it's uh, oh shoot let's see what the inches are here so it's two and a half by four inches and that was just random that isn't I mean you can make it any size you want and it doesn't have to be that heavy duty um, this is plenty heavy duty enough to mount on your car if you did want to mount on your car so basically what we have is the antenna itself this is a uh, gamma match that I, I made out of a piece of aluminum it's got a piece of uh, the inner part you know from the um, inner part of some coax cable uh, you can look online how to make a gamma match and then this is the tuning bar and if you see that um, it has a couple of uh, bolts here to hold it tight then they're they're too long I know that it's just what I happen to have around so what I did is I drilled two holes in here to, to match the diameter of this and I'll check out the diameter for you in a minute and so I spaced them and by moving this back and forth adjust your SWR all right, and then right in here, if you can see this, I just took and sealed it with some um, with a hot glue gun. I've got a single U bolt here, and that U bolt holds it plenty good. the The pole goes against here and right against. And I usually set the pole right to the bottom of this bolt, and that keeps it from moving up and down partially by itself. And then this clamp is plenty. Now, let me just see here. I have to put some, I put some glasses on so I can read this down small here. So this is, let's see, quarter inch, quarter inch bar stock. It's aluminum. I bent this on a bender um, that I bought for my uh, when I built my LFA, my six meter LFA um, Yagi. And it just happened to still work for this size material also. And that was for half inch. So it goes half inch to quarter, I think. Uh, I just got it off of Amazon. If I can remember, I'll try to link that for you too. But you can bend this. If you if you hold this tight on one side, clamp it down, and then just bend it around a piece of pipe. Now your, your dimensions are going to be, you want your 11 by 11, that part. And, and I'll give you a full length all the way around this thing. Let me set it back this way. So, sorry, I'm just going to give it to you in inches. This is going to be a rough estimate. So, 
So it's, it's 42 inches. I would cut this thing 43 inches. And then when you get done bending it as close as you can to 11 by 11, then cut your gap here. And I, it may be different for you, but uh, from the mount, it's uh, three and five eighths inches. And then between these, uh, I'm an inch. So inch center to center. And then if you look down here, uh, let me set it this way. This is a bolt and that just holds this from moving back and forth. That doesn't have anything to do with the tuning really. I mean, all this probably does pay a little bit of uh, to the tuning, but, um, and then I just mounted my coax connector here, two screws and the, the coax. And so it's grounded to this. And then the, uh, the coax that's inside here goes to the center of this. All right, I hope this was helpful for somebody. Um, it's really a cool little antenna, a little different, uh, may not be for everybody, but uh, hey, maybe you can make one and just have the fun of making it, if nothing else. So hit that like button, and if you are new here, you think about subscribing, it doesn't really cost you anything, and if you if you watch a few of my videos, you don't like my videos, you, you can always just unsubscribe. So uh, thank you for uh, spending your time with me. I know everybody's time is valuable, I really appreciate you watching my video. So for Chuck, KK6USY, Ham Radio Adventure, 73 All, and uh, everybody be safe. Catch you on the airwaves.